I just bought 5 million real YouTube views to test whether you could just pay your way to YouTube success. And this video is gonna reveal my costs, my analytics, and all the results I got. But you might be wondering, how could you actually pay your way to YouTube success? Now, there are six main ways to buy views on YouTube. And the goal of this video is to test all six of these methods to see how they work and which one is the best, if any. And we start our journey in the deepest, darkest depths of YouTube view buying land, which is buying bot views. <laughs> now, buying these types of views is very much against YouTube's community guidelines, aka if you encourage or participate in this, YouTube could delete your video. So this video is just going to be for research purposes only. So essentially, I started my journey by doing a bit of research, trying to figure out which one of these websites was not just going to take my money and run. And then I found one. It's this website, which I'm going to anonymize. And I was faced with the choice of buying real views or regular views, because apparently regular views aren't real, which is really rubbing it in. Now, after talking to a live chat agent, I finally deduce that regular views are basically just bot views. Essentially, these guys have programs set up that just run on autopilot, spamming out views on your videos. But these programs are intelligent and random enough that the YouTube algorithm theoretically can't detect them. The real views, on the other hand, as far as I can tell, come from click farms. And there's a real person with real accounts manually viewing your videos. But as you can see, this person's probably not going to become a loyal viewer of your channel anytime soon. Why don't you get a day job? Do something that contribute to society. Now, obviously, I'm going to test both of these methods, but let's start small by just purchasing 10,000 regular views, which cost me a whopping $26 on sale. Bargain. Now, I know this isn't anywhere near the millions of views I promised at the start of this video, but trust, we will get there. Now, I'm going to enter the link of the specific video I want to buy views for. We're going to check out ironically prove that we're not a robot. I'm gonna cross my fingers, cover my webcam, and enter my payment details. Oh God. Now, as we can see, it's gonna take between four and 18 weeks for my views to actually be delivered. So while we wait, let's go buy ourselves some real views. So basically, I just selected real views and went through the exact same process I just showed you. We bought 10,000 of them, which cost me $52. Now again, I know I'm being a bit of a tight ass here, but trust me, we'll make up for it later in the video. Now the good or bad news, depending on how you want to look at this, is that both of my videos did get 10,000 views and both of my videos have not yet been flagged or deleted by YouTube. So it looks like we got through the algorithm undetected. But what we're interested in more than the actual views is some of the deeper analytics. Well, first let's look at the video where we bought bot views. So you can see this video has gotten 9,998 views. We purchased our views right about here on day 94 and we continued getting views until on about day 160-ish, where you can see our graph sort of flattened out here. But what we're really interested in here is how much money it actually costs us to get these results. So how much money do we actually pay per view? How much money do we actually pay per subscriber, per watch hour? Because knowing these numbers is gonna help us calculate our ROI on these bought views, and then we can objectively compare the different view buying methods in this video to figure out which one is the best, if any. So I made a spreadsheet. Well, first let's look at the video that we bought bot views on. So in terms of what our stats are actually look like, we're paying about 0.26 cents per view. Interestingly, we also got 78.4 watch hours from this promotion, which works out at about 34.95 cents per watch hour. To put that into perspective, at these numbers, we'd need to spend about $1,398 to reach the 4,000 watch hours benchmark for monetization. We also got a whopping three subscribers, which works out at about $8.66 per subscriber, <laughs> which looks like a staggering $8,666 if we wanted to use this method to buy 1,000 subscribers. Oh, hell no. What I'm really interested to see though is whether or not these views actually triggered the algorithm. So what you can do is you can go into your video and you can click on see more and then from content, come across to traffic source. This is gonna show us a breakdown of the views we got and where they actually came from, which is gonna help us distinguish between the YouTube algorithm promoting our videos and the bot views that we got. So what we can see down here is that we've got 7,230 views from direct or unknown and 2,678 views from external. These are clearly our bot views here. Now, when it comes to the YouTube algorithm giving us views, these usually come from browse features and suggested videos. Put this into perspective, we've gotten 15 views from the YouTube algorithm as a result of buying 10,000 bot views. And so the ROI for this method is not that great. If we come and look at our retention graph, uh, we can see it is pretty miserable. <laughs> also, if we come across to our click-through rate, we can see that it is 
about 2.4%. In general, I think it's safe to say that a 2.4% click-through rate is pretty bad. So just getting more views wasn't enough to tip this video over the edge. But how does this video compare to the video where we bought real views? So in terms of the stats on our real views video, it got 10,000 views as well, but a slightly higher amount of watch hours and also a slightly higher number of subscribers. If we actually look at how these numbers work out, we're paying here about 0.52 cents per view, paying about 50.4 cents per watch hour, and we're spending about $13 per subscriber. Now, if we come into this video and see whether or not our promotion triggered any organic growth, we actually got less organic views from the YouTube algorithm with this video, even though we paid for real views. In terms of the other stats for this video, our attention graph looks equally horrendous and our click-through rate is miserable. <laughs> now, to put this into perspective, one of my students posted this exact same video on his channel, and here's what that video Video's analytics look like with 100% organic traffic. As you can see, our click through rate is far better. Our attention is far better than anything our bot or click farm views were able to generate, even though this is the exact same video. But with all that being said, how do we actually rank bot and click farm views on a tier list compared to the other view buying methods we're gonna cover later in this video? Before we can give it a ranking, there are a few other things we need to consider. Firstly, all of the views that we just bought are never going to become active loyal viewers on our channel. Also, all of the views we just bought are pretty much worthless when it comes to actually generating money because they came from a third world overseas country as YouTubers, we don't get paid as much ad revenue for views that come from those places. Don't shoot, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> also, it was a little bit painful trying to suss out the right website to try and make sure I wasn't just gonna get scammed out of my money. There was a big time delay on those views actually being delivered to my video on my channel. So based on all of that, I would put our bot views in C tier, whereas our more expensive click farm views, which essentially did the exact same thing as the bot views, but just for more money, definitely is going in D tier. So now we move on to testing some of the more reputable promotional methods. And the first one is relatively new as of creating this video, but it's pretty cool. What you can do is when you log onto YouTube studio, you wanna to come to content, and then for most channels up in the top right hand side, you're gonna see promotions. It's currently in beta. But if you click here, your tab's probably gonna look a little bit different to this one because I've already run a promotion. But you should see a button that says plus new promotion. You wanna click on that. From here, you'll be asked to select the video from your channel that you wanna promote. I could just say this one. And then YouTube's gonna promote your video as an ad across the platform in a way that looks like this. If we hit next, from here, you're gonna be able to choose what countries you want to target. And you can also choose a specific language if you click on this drop down. From here, if you click on next, you can choose how much money you wanna spend on the promotion. And if you click on this drop down, you can select how long you want the promotion to actually run for. From here, you just click on promote, input your payment details and you're good to go. But I'm not gonna do that because I've already run a campaign. I wanna share with you my experiences with this method. So in terms of the actual numbers for this test, I spent about a hundred bucks got 300,000 impressions, got about 1,580 views and 240 subscribers. On average, I was paying about 6.3 cents per view. To put that into perspective, for a thousand views, I need to pay about $63. I was paying about $7.70 per watch hour. So I'd need to fork out a staggering $30,000 just to get 4,000 watch hours using this method. Now, so far the stats are a little bit miserable, but when we come to cost per subscriber, we can see that I'm averaging a about one subscriber for every 41 cents spent, which I'm actually very impressed with. That's far cheaper than any method we've currently tested. If we come to the analytics of this video and we dive into the traffic, what we can see here is the bottom line is our YouTube advertising. You can see it's zero views up until we hit about July 26. And you can see the above lines are browsed features and suggested features. So this is the algorithm sending us traffic. And you can see it looks like our advertisement has basically had no impact. I don't see a decline in views or an increase in views correlating with when we started or stopped promoting this video. So how does this method compare to other view buying methods? In terms of our actual stats for this video, our average view duration is actually pretty underwhelming, especially considering how many people subscribed. It's only 31 seconds. So a couple of things. Firstly, it's really easy to set up a campaign you can do it within YouTube. And I like that I can select what country I wanna run my promotion in. However, something you might've noticed when we went through that build out process is that YouTube never asks us what kind of viewers we wanna target. We 
we can select the country and language, but that's it. Now my guess is YouTube looks at the viewers of your previous videos to figure out what kind of people to send your promoted videos to. So for a channel like mine that has an established audience, that works fine. But I could see this being a bit of a problem for a brand new channel that has very little data, or if you're a variety channel that doesn't have a very focused audience. So with all this being said, when we weigh everything up, I think promotions probably belongs in B tier. It's a tad expensive unless you're solely after subscribers. But is there a way to get a lot of views cheaper than using YouTube promotions, but also without breaking YouTube's community guidelines? Well, let me introduce you to Google Ads, which is basically the most advanced way of running promotions. And I recently spent about $88,000 to buy over 5.4 million views. So this is where some of these numbers get pretty big and exciting. But first, how do you actually use a Google Ads account to promote your YouTube videos? Well, you wanna go to Google, just type in Google Ads, and you wanna go to ads.google.com. From here, you can just click on start now and just follow the prompts to create a completely free account. Once you've created your account and gone through like the basic setup and stuff, you should see a page that looks like this. And we wanna click on this plus button that says create. And we're gonna create a campaign. So we're gonna select create a campaign without a goals guidance. And then we're gonna click on video. We're gonna leave this on default, hit continue. You can name your campaign. You can add your budget here. You can choose how long you want your campaign to run for. I usually like to let campaigns run over a number of days because what you'll find is that the algorithm will optimize if you give it more time. Come down here, we're gonna click on networks and get rid of video partners on the Google display network because we just wanna be promoted on YouTube. And if we come down here to locations, click on enter another location. And then in enter another location, I like to add the following countries. Pause the video and see what these countries are. The reason I add these countries specifically for this type of campaign is that these countries are the cheapest to advertise in, yet they have a relatively large number of English speaking people, meaning we can get pretty cheap views. So then you wanna come down here and just make sure you select English. Gonna continue scrolling down, leave everything else on default, and then you just gotta copy and paste the link of the YouTube video you want to promote in here. So for example, I could just chuck this one in. And what we're gonna do is select skippable in-stream ads. And then this video is gonna show up as one of those skippable pre-roll ads that you see all over YouTube. Then what you're also gonna do is in final URL, you're also gonna paste the link of that video. So what's gonna happen is when people click on this ad video, they're gonna be sent to the video actually on your channel page. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on call to action here. For the call to action, we're gonna click here and we're gonna come down to watch now and you can just leave the headline as it is. For your maximum cost per view, I'd usually recommend just putting in like one or $2. It's not actually gonna be that expensive, but sometimes if you put in a really low number, the campaign just won't spend money. And then from here, you just click create campaign and it's gonna start running and promoting your video. So I recently ran this campaign here for a hundred bucks promoting this video here on my channel. Now this video is a video that I thought was going to do terribly in terms of views and it did because it's about me and my story and that's not what people watch my videos for. But I wanted this video to be on the channel for brands, sponsorships or more hardcore fans who want to learn a little bit more about me. But it looked really embarrassing when the video only had like 5,000 views. So I wanted to boost it a little bit and that's why I created this campaign. So in terms of the actual results of these types of campaigns, you can usually be looking at a cost per view of about 1.1 cents. In terms of watch hours, I'm looking at about 39 cents per watch hour, which is pretty good. On the other hand, I'm paying $10 per subscriber, which is similar to some of the other methods we mentioned so far, except for the YouTube promotions method, which blew this one out of the water. Now, in terms of whether or not promoting this video triggered any organic growth, the results were pretty much the same as what we've seen throughout this entire process. It had little to no impact whatsoever. But speaking of having an impact on videos, there's a bit of fear going around that if you buy ads on your videos, YouTube's just gonna stop promoting them organically. So in Spiff's video, he bought a bunch of views using YouTube ads, which you can see from this spike here. And you can see after he bought those ads, his views dropped off significantly. So it looks like he essentially just killed his views. But in my testing, I haven't found a situation where this has actually been the case. Just to show you some real examples, if you have a look at the orange line, this is where I bought views through YouTube ads. Now, if we look at the other lines here, these are representing YouTube search, YouTube browse features, and suggested videos, which is basically the YouTube algorithm promoting our content. And as you can see, there's pretty much no noticeable impact of the YouTube algorithm not sending me views just because I bought advertisements. Pretty much the closest example I could 
find of a YouTube video being killed by paying for advertisements was this one. You can see the green line here is when I started paying for advertisements. So you can see I went from you know, zero advertisement views up to like 3000 advertisement views. And you can see that around about that same time, my browse features traffic, which is the blue line, kind of flattened out. And so it looks like, oh, maybe I've killed my organic reach of this video. But if we come over to here, we can see that it starts to pick back up again and off it goes. Now, granted, these individual videos are much smaller numbers than what is showcased in the Spiffing Brits video. But actually, if we look at the graph in the Spiffing Brits video closely, something interesting happens. You can see that he started paying for ads around about here, but before he was paying for ads, his video was already dying. There was already a downward slope here. And so following his buying ads, the amount of views just kind of stayed basically as flat as it was when he started paying for the ads. But even so, later on, you can see over here on the right hand side, the views are starting to pick back up again, which kind of aligns with what I've found so far, which is usually it has no impact aside from a couple of circumstances where it seems like the algorithm like delays promotion a little bit for some reason, but then it starts to pick back up again later. Now in saying all that, even though I don't think we should be too concerned about killing videos using this technique I just showed you, there are still two problems with this type of campaign. And that is firstly, viewer loyalty. So for this video, there's basically no targeting other than countries, meaning it's just gonna be shown to everyone. So people who do view this video probably aren't going to be that likely to actually want to stick around and become loyal viewers of the channel. Also, even though it's a hell of a lot cheaper to reach these, it comes at the cost of these people not being worth very much money to our channel. We're not going to get paid very much in ad revenue for having them here. And we're also not going to be able to sell them stuff or get many sponsors, which sounds very harsh and racist, but it's just the truth. I don't make the rules. It's just how it works. So to fix that, we could adjust our campaign slightly to still run this type of in-stream campaign, but in a slightly different way. So what we could do is we could get rid of our cheaper, low CPM countries and just enter higher, more valuable countries where our target audience are actually most likely residing in. For example, United States could be one. The other thing we could do, if we come down here to targeting, what we can do is we can add keywords that are related to our video. We could come to topics and search for particular topics that might be highly related to our video. Let's say like editing software maybe. And obviously you need to tailor this to who your target audience actually are. But when you do that, now all of a sudden your ads are probably gonna be shown to people who are much more likely to want to be genuine and viewers of your content. Now you might be wondering, well, why wouldn't you want to do this in the first place? And the reason is, well, it makes your results more expensive. Now all up, this is a method I've spent about $88,000 on to buy about 5 million views because this is what most brands and clients are interested in, in my experience. And here are the average results I've found. So on average, a good campaign will get you views at about 1.6 cents. It will cost you about $1.42 per watch hour and it'll cost you $35.85 per subscriber. So as you can see, lot more expensive than our untargeted method. But again, there are people who are happy to spend more money to get a higher quality of person who's gonna be more valuable to them and their channel. But there's actually still a problem with this type of campaign. And that is the way these in-stream ads actually show up on YouTube is in that skippable ad format we've all grown to hate. And the problem with this ad format is even if someone actually watches your video and enjoys it, they have to click on the link in the ad just to go to your channel. And then from there, they can subscribe or watch your other videos. But that step of actually having to click the link in the ad adds a lot of friction. And so we can run a slightly different type of campaign if we want. What you could do is go through the exact same process I showed you earlier, but when you paste in your video link, instead of clicking skippable in-stream ad, you wanna click on in feed ad. From here, you can enter your headlines and descriptions, and then your video will show up like this as an actual ad within YouTube. So if people now click on this ad, they'll be taken to the video on your channel. And if they enjoy it, it's gonna be much easier for them to subscribe or watch more of your videos because there's no extra step where they actually have to click on a link within an ad to then be taken to your channel. Now, the disadvantage of an in feed campaign is your views are gonna be even more expensive. Our benchmark here is about six cents per view. It costs about 95 cents per watch hour, which isn't too bad actually. And for some reason I've found the cost per subscriber is relatively high, which is surprising because this ad format is the most similar one to the YouTube promotions method we talked about earlier, which has the cheapest subscriber rate. So in terms of where Google ads will actually sit on our tier list, I've broken it into three different categories because the three different campaigns have their strengths and weaknesses. Now the first ad campaign type we talked about, the in-stream campaign without any targeting. I liked it because it got pretty cheap views and watch hours. So it's going up in A tier. On the other hand, our targeted in-stream ads where we actually told them the type of person we want to show our ad to got more 
more expensive results, but the advantage of them is we're attracting a higher quality of viewer. And we also don't need any existing data or views on our channel to tell Google what type of person we want our ads to be shown to. So because of that, I'm gonna put it in B tier. And last but not least, we have the in feed or as they were once called discovery ads. These ads are the most expensive Google ads video campaign that we can run out of the ones we covered. But I like that the friction is reduced. You don't need to click on a link to go to the person's channel if you like their content. Simply by clicking on the ad, you are on their channel automatically. And so because of that, I think it deserves to be in B tier as well. So $100,000 spent, nearly 6 million views generated, and one sexy tier list later, we can finally go over the overall results. So when it comes to buying views, the cheapest overall result were our bot views. However, they are against YouTube's community guidelines. So the second cheapest view was our Google in-stream campaign campaign without any targeting at an average 1.1 cents per view. When it comes to watch hours, our bot views were the cheapest, but again, they are against YouTube's community guidelines. Our second cheapest, however, was again, our YouTube in-stream campaign without any targeting. When we come to subscribers though, the new YouTube promotions feature easily takes the trophy at an average 41.5 cents per subscriber. Out of all of these campaigns I've run, none of them seem to have killed organic growth. However, I'm sure if you're extremely excessive with any of the non-targeted methods we've talked about, you might see some negative impact. And last but not least, all of the promotion methods we talked about did result in a small amount of organic growth triggered by the YouTube algorithm, but it's so small that it's definitely not worth the investment if that's what you're doing it for. And so they are definitely use cases for when you might wanna buy views. The ideal way you wanna be growing, in my opinion, is by getting organic promotion from the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna learn how to get that, click the video on screen, it won't disappoint.